And as an illustration to this, I may share with the committees that even last evening, we were looking at two case reports of allergic reactions. We know from the uh, very extensive clinical trials that this wasn't a feature, but if we need to strengthen our advice, now that we've had this experience in the vulnerable populations, the groups who've been selected as a priority, we get that advice to the field immediately. Dr. Rain talked about you know, identifying uh, things once a vaccine is in use. The initial process, uh, very importantly, picks up common side effects. That's what the big phase two and then subsequently, if they're safe, phase three clinical trials allow to happen. But extremely rare, but important issues, inevitably you accrue more information over time. And the NHS, through to the MHRA, is in a very good position to make sure that we can pick things up quickly, identifying them, communicate them widely, ensure that we improve practice. So there's a backward-looking bit and a forward-looking bit for these vaccines, and they all depend on pre-existing systems. We know that these are very good vaccines to provide uh, short to medium-term um, protection. We don't know how long that lasts. It might last for a very long time. It might last for, uh, you know, nine months. Uh, I think it's more likely to be somewhere between those two. Uh, and in that case, we may have to have a situation where we have to be in a position to revaccinate, uh, particularly people who are the most vulnerable. So I think all of these will have to will have to think about as the information comes out on length of effect, efficacy, safety, and so on, and which uh, vaccines best suit which people.